Hey, it's Trent, and welcome back to Marmalade Cream Media. I've got another podcast tip of the week for you. Uh, and today, I just wanted to show you uh, this mix that I'm working on here and a tool that I've talked about before that I think is, is it's become a game changer for me. So, uh, and that tool is Acon Digital Deverberate. This thing is awesome. Uh, let me just show you what I'm working on here. So I've got a track. Let's look at this, uh, the host up here. I'm going to solo this track up here and I'm going to disable all the effects here that I've got. We'll, we'll talk about the plugin chain in a second, but here's, here's just the raw recording. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between, but clearly they're, they're, it's, it's squarely borrowing a page out of the Roblox playbook. And, you know, to the point of so there you go. There's the recording. Um, it, it's it's actually it's a fairly nice recording in the sense that the frequency response is very balanced. Um, we don't have any weird resonances or bloated low end or or super crispy top end or anything like that. It's a fairly like nicely balanced recording. Uh, there's not any like crazy background noise anything like that. But you'll notice that you can clearly hear the ambience of the room. And I happen to know that this track was recorded with a Neumann microphone. Uh, I don't know if it was a U87 or a U89, uh, but it but it's one of the U series Neumann microphones. And one of the characteristics that they have, the, the U87 and the U89 are fairly different in their frequency response. But one of the characteristics that they share, um, that most condenser microphones share, is they have a, a lot of sensitivity. They pick up on minute details, and that's one of the reasons we love condenser microphones, especially the really high-end ones, is they pick up detail in a beautiful way. There's a downside to that, though, and that means that they pick up all the detail of your voice plus all the detail of what's going on in your room. So if you have any reflective surfaces, um, if you've got multiple reflective surfaces in particular, where sound is bouncing off of them and you've got kind of a boxy sounding room, which, you know, most small rooms are pretty boxy sounding without acoustic treatment. Well, this is what you get. You, you have some uh, just kind of some some very tight, short echoes, basically. So we don't perceive them as echo. It's not like echo, echo, echo. It's um, it's so short. The The repeats are so short that um, it just kind of sounds like uh, reflections and just sort of like a sort of sort of a muddy reverb, if you will. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between, but clearly they're they're. So it's not bad at all, but it's 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 mushy in that way, and that's because of that that ambience here. So you'll notice when I engage the plugin chain, it tightens up quite a bit. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between but clearly they're they're it's it's squarely borrowing a page out of the roblox play right so immediately that just at all of a sudden it just pulls the voice out forward right it, it's it's removing all of that that sort of echo and ambience in the background and it's pulling the voice forward so um the the effect on on headphones is it sounds drier the effect on speakers is it is it literally it's like it's coming out of the speakers more so if you're sitting in front of a pair of monitors a stereo pair of monitors, then the the unprocessed signal sounds like it's just sitting back behind the speakers. And the process signal is coming forward. It's being pulled forward. And so as a result, it's easier to understand. It's easier to follow along because it's it's drier. And most of the work here is being done by this Deverberate plugin. But um, I'll go over the whole plugin chain really quick just so you can see what's going on. But um, I've got Deverberate first. Um, and then I've got this breath control pro plugin and all it does is it sort of, it senses when the speaker takes a breath and then it turns it each breath down by 4.7 dB. So just turning it down just a tiny bit. Um, not a lot. I, I don't like killing breaths altogether. Breaths are natural. That's a natural part of speech. We expect them to happen. Um, I'm just trying to tame them a little bit so they're not quite so loud. Then I've got this deep plosive module on here, just catching some some poppy stuff down low and that's another thing with a condenser mic that's a little bit different from dynamic mics in my experience is, is condensers can be more sensitive to plosives for a couple reasons one of them is that the the diaphragm on a on a condenser microphone is very very thin and so it's more easily disrupted with by any um, strong blast of air like we would get with a p sound or b sound 
Um, and so I'm using this dplosive just to clean up in those instances. Then I've got this dynamic EQ. This is the TDR Nova. Uh, and all it's doing, it's just, I'm used to using one band of it, and it's doing a um, some de-essing right at 4.6K. And I've got it on a ratio of 3 to 1. So basically, it's just grabbing S sounds in that specific region. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway right, so if between. I turn that but, off. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between. But clearly, they're... they're it's, so it's not doing a ton, but it's just sort of taming that specific region where this particular speaker has a little bit of um, a whistling kind of sound on those on those S's. They're a little bit sharp there. So this this is catching those. And then I've got a little bit of EQ with this UAD 1073 plugin. And uh, I, th I this, you know, I don't normally use this for voiceover stuff. Um, it's fairly new to me. First of all, I only got this plugin about a year ago, and I haven't really used it a whole lot. But um, it, you know, it's just kind of limited in its EQ for for voice specifically but that's that's kind of the the blessing and a curse with this particular plugin the the downside is you don't have much control the upside is it sounds really good pretty much wherever you put it um so it's a very musical that's an overused word but it's a very musical sounding eq but what i've got going on here is i've got a high pass filter at 50 and then um th this is it's a little strange if you're not used to the way that neve marks their controls but um this bottom control here is a low shelf and so i've got a, a little bit of a boost here at 110 hertz so just you know kind of bringing a little bit of body um, one thing i noticed when i engaged the deverberate plugin is that it i lost some of the body down in the, the bottom octave of the voice and so i'm bringing a little bit of that back with this shelf so that's it, at 110 it's a shelf boost that means it's boosting at 110 and below it's bringing all that up. Uh, and then mid-range, I just have the tiniest little boost at 4.6K. Okay, and that, that's, it, again, this is, um, this is a parametric, uh, well, I said this is a, this is a band pass style uh, mid-range control, but it's a very wide boost. So it's not like I'm, you know, you noticed I was taming 4.6K here with this de -esser. But that was in a very tight range. That has a very tight cue on it. So it's just really grabbing a very specific part of that region. So when you see me boosting 4.6K, the reason I did that here is because that was just what the, how the controls work. You can either go 3.2 or 7.2, right? Those are your other options in that region. 7.2 is too high. 3.2 is too low. is a little nasally sounding. So 4.6 right in the middle, that worked better. And it's a very, very wide uh, e curve. It, the Q factor is very, very wide. So if I'm boosting there, it's not like I'm pushing up just that sibilant area that I was, I was uh, taming beforehand. I'm boosting quite a bit above it and below it as well. And it's just the tiniest bit. It just felt like it just brought things forward a little bit. And then uh, finally up here, there's a high shelf. And this high shelf is fixed at 12K. And I'm boosting that just a little bit, just for a little bit more air and brightness. Um, so I'll, I'll take that out of the chain. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between, but now it's in. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between, but clearly they're, they're, it's, it's squarely borrowing a page out of the Roblox playbook. And, you know, to the point of, so very subtle moves here, very subtle. I'm just kind of very subtly sweetening things. It already sounded nice and balanced to begin with. So I didn't need to make any big, you know, rips and cuts. I'm following that with the SSL chain, and all this is doing is there's there's no EQ applied here, but I am using the um, the expander portion here. So I've got it's turning things down in the the gaps. And then I've got another deesser here at 5k, and this particular deesser is affecting 5k and up, right? And so and it's so it's more of like a shelf that it's pushing down um, again just to tame the sibilant areas. And I often I do that a lot where I boost the top end, and then you know, somewhere around like 12K, maybe even a little bit higher. And then I will DS at 5K and up. And so they're interacting, right? The DSer is really bringing down that 5 to 10K range where there's usually some sibilant stuff. Where And then by boosting the high end, you're still bringing out some air, but without over accentuating the S sounds. So there you go. And then I've got my normal vocal writer at the end here doing some leveling. Um, but to go back to the original point of this, uh, of this particular tip is the deverberate control. 
So let's let's disable everything except Deverberate. So they can offer something here that's all right. And let's disable this deverberate and really hear what it's doing here. So this is with nothing. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between. And kick it back in. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between. But I mean, that's that's just really nice sounding to me. Um, basically, the way that this thing works is you slap it on a track, and it's using it, it has some sort of machine learning algorithm to read the incoming signal and then remove. Uh, reverberation even it can even remove that very early reflections type stuff that I was describing earlier and like we have in this case and it's 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 very good at that and you don't have to really like set it there's there's very few settings here you just let it do its thing and most of the time I can just in, in you know initiate the uh, plugin and then it just does it sounds great without having to touch anything but we have a do have a couple of relevant controls the main one here is the spectral smoothing so as you turn this up, it, it is supposed to reduce, as it says, it's supposed to reduce the amount of artifacts that you get from the reverb reduction. So the higher it is, the, the fewer artifacts you have. But on the flip side, it does less reverb reduction. So if I crank it all the way up to 100. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between, but clearly still works. So they can offer something here that so they can offer something here. It still works, but there's a little bit of that mud that's still down in there. Now, let me take it all the way down to zero. So it's going to do the hardest reverb reduction. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between, but clearly they're they're. So they can offer something here that's sort of halfway between. So they can offer something here that's sort of. So you can tell there, it sounds really tight there. Um, and so th that, it sounds pretty good, but I can hear a little bit of artifactiness. It, it sounds a little tiny bit unnatural, certainly not bad, especially compared to other reverb reduction plugins I've used that are much more heavy handed, but I liked it somewhere around like the 50% mark. Uh, so it's, it's still, it's, it, it's a little smoother sounding to me, uh, but it's still very tight. So they can offer something here that's sort of, ha so they can offer something here that's sort of. So they can offer something here that's sort of, and that's it, man. To me, that that is just a game changer. That is just an excellent, excellent um, improvement on on what we have. Uh, so I'm gonna bring the rest of the chain back in here. Yeah, I, I think that it just it's it does this in a very natural way, so that any fidelity that I'm losing by by using this plugin is is made up for in the the tightness and the dryness of the of the end result so i really I'm, i make that trade-off all day every day now one of the things i've noticed since i've started using this plugin is that it's very sensitive or it's not very sensitive but it is the result that you get at the end depends on the quality of your signal coming in so like i said this is a really well recorded voiceover right so this this was recorded with a, a good microphone um, it's it's placed in a way that it captures a nice balanced uh, capture of the voice. It's going into a recorder. I think this was made with a, a Sound Devices Mix Pre recorder. Um, so it's a it's a nice low noise uh, recorder with good preamps in it. Now most most interfaces today are low noise with good preamps. It's not really a huge issue, but there are some that are a little bit noisier than others. Uh, but we don't have any of that. Right. So there, there's not a lot of junk to clean up. And as a result, you get better. You get a better result out of something like this deverberate at the end. On the flip side, if you if I had a recording that was really nasty sounding, you know, had a lot of bloated proximity effect and uh, a bunch of background noise, then it would be harder. I think you would get more artifacts um, out of the the deverb process. That's what I've noticed in, in my use of this so far. So it does matter. The, the recording quality does matter. It's still worth dialing in the chain that you have as best as you can, even if you end up still using some of these corrective tools. Um, but uh, that's mainly what I wanted to talk about today is just how awesome this plugin is. I mean, that's that just sounds really nice. And I love that I can just slap it on a track and it, it just... It just works, <laughs> you know. There's not much to, not much to adjust here. Um, there's a few other controls that are on this plugin, but but frankly, that's really all that I do is just adjust that spectral smoothing control. Occasionally, I'll touch this sensitivity control, which is um, 
you know, it says it controls the sensitivity of the AI based reverb detection in percent. I don't really know what that means. It, it kind of does a similar thing to what the spectral smoothing control does. Um, but I've found that usually I just leave it at its default setting of zero and then just adjust the smoothing to get the amount of reverb reduction I want. But anyway, if this is something you have to deal with a lot, if you're editing podcasts or other voiceover content that has, you know, that's not recorded in great rooms or the mic was not placed particularly well, so it's capturing too much ambiance, then give this a try. Deverberate. 